The Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Looking for the best pool supplies? Look no further than Doheny's Pool Supplies. With a history dating back to 1967, this family-owned business offers everything families need to keep their pools clean and sparkling from chemicals to equipment. Plus, customers enjoy free shipping on all orders. Visit Doheny's Pool Supplies today at doheny.com, D-O-H-E-N-Y dot com to learn more. Forest Bluff Real Estate Team serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Josephitis, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and of course, Michelle Parnell. Get a free market analysis now at forestbluffrealestate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Ganjier. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, Exceptional Process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Havy Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest own Mike Havy. Check them out at havycommunications.com. We'd also like to say we're thankful for our Patreon supporters, Otto, John C., Helen, and Herrick. Morning. Joe Weiss. How are you? What up, yo? I'm going to have the classic rock DJ voice today. Really? A sore throat. Oh, that's so I'm, I'm coming up in our next half hour. Led Zeppelin. <laughs> First, here's from 1974, The Rolling Stones. <coughs> number, so, yeah, number four in the charts, number one in your heart. <laughs> so what's going on? Uh, just uh, getting a lot of a lot of comments about the Cedar Root. Uh, hey, hey, hey. what? I get touched the nerve. Uh, did I it's touching people's wallet? No, not you. Uh, oh, I think okay, the issue, right. not you, not you. No, well, I think the I... issue because it's affecting. There's a lot of cedar roofs in this town, not just in the historic district, but in the rest of the city. And obviously, the, the, the historic district rules apply only to the historic district, but um, the. Uh, that's Where serious. I live, the That's subdivision serious. has rules about it too, and people are concerned. And I don't know, I'll wait till I'll wait for Rick here to do my personal stuff. Well, he show up, but Cedar's craft, man. My last house had that shacky or sh- whatever shingles on it, and that thing, you get one little drop of uh, hail, and it cracks it and it molds. It's that's crap. And if lightning strikes it. And you can't get uh, insurance or full insurance, right? Yeah, talk to uh, talk to our friend Skew about insurance for Cedar Roof Houses. Or any other insurance agent. <laughs> so, uh, so, so they don't like the composite stuff because it doesn't age well. <sighs> Go to any patio deck. Well, here's... You know, first of all, let me. I'll. I guess I'll tell my personal story. So, okay. about 16 years ago, I was living in Glenview. We had a really bad thunderstorm one night, like two o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's one of those ones where it's pouring so hard, you know, you can't even hear anything. It's hitting the roof so hard, and all of a sudden, there's a bit. There's a jolt of lightning outside, but there've been a ton of jolts of lightning. And yeah. it kind of woke me up, and I shook a little, and my wife, which me waking up, woke up my wife. And she's like, what's what's wrong? I'm like, I don't know. It's... And then, you know, at the time, our, our kids who are now teenagers were little kids. Drew was two and Lauren was less than a year old. And, um, you know, they wake up during kids wake up during thunderstorms and get scared. So he wakes up. He's scared. So I go to his room and I hear this crackling noise. What is that? And I look out the window and I see a little glow in the trees. The trees are so there's a, re- a reflective glow and it's kind of orange and i'm like where is that coming from did, did lightning strike a tree in somewhere or strike the neighbor's house i'm like i better go check on this so i'm starting to go down the stairs and all of a sudden my doorbell starts ringing feverishly a- a- and uh yeah like a pinball machine it was one of our neighbors he says 
your roofs are on fire. I've already called the fire department. So get, just get out, <laughs> get everybody out. <laughs> so we get out, we get out. I round up the kids, you know, and, uh, and grab like our wedding photo album and, and a couple other personal belongings. <laughs> I didn't have a microphone then, but, um, but and we went into a neighbor. So it was pouring rain. And thankfully, combination of the, the neighbor just happened to be up and saw the whole thing. Um, and so he was right on the ball, called 911 and then told us. Um, and then the pouring rain, it was raining so hard, I think that helped contain it. And the fire department was on the corner of the fire station there. It was right around the corner. So the, the boys in red were, were were on it right away. They took care of it. So all that got damaged really was a dormer that had to be replaced. Not the end of the world. Fast forward to uh, 2022, 15 years later, right before I moved, uh, a house a block away from me with a very similar design and that cedar roof, bad thunderstorm, uh, lightning strikes it, nobody sees it, nobody's home. So it burns and it keeps burning and it keeps burning till finally they see it outside and it's too late. And by the time the fire, and this made the news that Channel 2 uh, fi- helicopters were flying over during, during live shots. The house was a total wreck. I mean, it had to be. We'll, had we'll to put be the link down. right here. Yeah, it was a really bad. Uh, it was a really bad situation. I felt awful. Thank God no one was hurt. But just the the impact on that family and everything. And then the subdivision. We didn't. This wasn't a historic area. This was the Glen. Uh, but the subdivision I call it faux historical, where they make things, they build things to look like they're historical. Um, but the uh, the subdivision finally said, you know, this is crazy that we have these rules about cedar roofs when there's there's newer materials that look just like it and last longer, are more affordable. And most importantly, if there's a fire, um, won't burn it quick. So um, they they changed the rules that any new after that um, could be an alternative and they go through specs and everything like that. And again, this is an HOA, not the, the village of Glenview. Um, but take that to here. So that same event could very easily happen here in Lake Forest, where lightning strikes a house, no one's home, no one sees it for a while. Um, because you, you trust me, I, I know from personal experience, you don't you you don't always know that lightning strikes. You hear it, but um, you don't know. And if you're not home, it's even worse. So um, you know, I get that this is a historic area, and I get that there are rules, and I I Totally appreciate what the council had to do. Uh, the, yeah, the let's other fast night, forward to the city council meeting. Yeah. That day. What, what what happened? So there was, it was actually a pretty routine meeting and I didn't go. Um, I just watched it, but I did watch it at home. I'm like, oh, I'll turn this on. And then, um, they had a couple, they had an update on Deer Path, uh, on the Deer Path Park looking really nice there uh, coming along. They had a, a presentation uh, uh, from Dickinson about their programs like that so you know pretty routine so one agenda item one order of new business and it's appeal an appeal from a family here in town that lives in the historic district um they need a new roof the house was built in the 20s um the roof uh is leaking they've been trying to work with the city on this for some time they because it's in the historic district they have to go through the hpc and the hpc is like must be cedar must be cedar or asphalt. 17 Set or asphalt because the original roof was asphalt when the house was built in the 20s. They didn't change it to cedar till I think 1964. But they're like, Look, we've got something that looks just as good, if not better, than cedar. Um, it's and it's more affordable and it's fire resistant, um, as opposed to cedar. Uh, so if God forbid lightning does strike it or a fire starts somehow, somehow else in the house, um, so uh, you know, they but. Can't do it. And the council, the council felt very bad about it. You could tell uh, Alderman Goshgarian had the best remarks, I thought, on this, where he talked about this. This is the the HPC is going to need to address this, and the the, the city is going to need to address this because, like I said a minute ago, insurance companies are um, going to cover this stuff. We don't keep a historic house. We don't say you can't update the plumbing, you can't update the electrical system. You can't, you know, I mean, there's certain things called safety and stuff. We, you have to balance that. And I think 
this product, I think the brand name is Da Vinci and there may be other products out there similar to that. Um, I think that you'd have the cedar look without having the cedar. So I think it'd be the best of both worlds and it's, it's safer, it's more affordable. Uh, I mean, I'm hearing quotes of like 200 grand for new cedar roofs right now because there is a shortage of it. So I, I know there was a couple former HPC members who um, aligned with our favorite group of crew blockers that, that came up and spoke at the meeting. And I, I just think their heads are in the sand. Fine line between historical preservation and hysterical preservation. Yeah. And I think the city really needs to address this. I don't know if it's through the staff, if it's through the HPC, however they do it. But I think this family really, unfortunately, got caught up in some circumstances there that. Um, well, hold on. They 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 got to accept some of this blame, too, because, look, they did two years of research on trying to find a room. Yeah. And they didn't know they were in a historic district. OK, I get it. I get mm -hmm. it. Two years ago, you could have. When, when you buy the place, you tell me the realtor doesn't say you're in a historic district, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I thought about that, too, when I heard that. I yeah. Good point. So, so I, I, I think there's a little bit. But the, I think the bigger picture here, Pete, is do we really want a, a beautiful house like this burning down or falling apart? Because look, when you buy in the Lake Forest, you know, it's a historic area. You know, it. You, there, there's a reason why you're buying into it. There's a reason why the prices are up. So buyer beware. But that being said, we've had people on this show that have talked about the HPC 17, you know, striking again. Do you need 17 standards? Because it's like 17. That means you could strike down anything for any reason. So that needs. I, I view this as you remember uh, in, in the movie, the Ten Commandments with Moses yeah. holding up I do the these old these, these older 15, folks from the whoops, these ten men <laughs> <laughs> these twenty whoops seventeen commandments <laughs> that we I mean seventeen his seventeen criteria that we must follow because in nineteen thirty eight I mean I mean like I said I love history I really do but you have to balance that with practicality and and especially when it comes to safety. I mean, my God, I, I, I just, I mean, go to Wrigley Field or go to Fenway Park in Boston. Those are two very historic ballparks, beautiful ballparks. You get the history there, but they've updated a lot of stuff. They don't have the same toilets there from 1908 or when, 1914 when Wrigley Field was built or whatever year. I mean, you you balance history with practicality. And I think this is one of those issues where they need to think about this and take a hard look at it and allow these alternatives and, and i get it that you don't want it to look like it's a, it's a crappy cheap roof uh in a historic area but um i don't you know, think the I've person paying for it wants it to look crappy so <laughs> right and i think you know the uh, i've talked to a couple of folks who again if you don't live in a historic district and you don't live in an hoa that has similar rules you're free to, to use these. So there are houses in Lake Forest doing it. And I've talked to some folks who drove around in preparation for this case and looked at them and they couldn't tell the difference. Yeah. So the HPC, from the people I've talked to about this, look, I didn't know this was an issue till, till Monday. I, I No, just, neither did I. I was at band practice. I come home, I flip on and what cedar roofs? I know they're crap, but let's see. And sure enough, and then, you know, I wrote a little, I put a little article together based little on bitty. The Yeah, a little, <laughs> little, little something out there, trying to get educated on it. And I, I know a couple of people that went up and spoke and I talked to them about it and because they live over there, they're neighbors. So they would have a vested interest. They're like, hey, man, that's fine. HPC needs to update a little bit quicker their their processes the technology they need to look at it they need to be a little bit more proactive because I, i've said this a couple of years ago where there should be certain things that the hpc could look at and say you know what this type of home this type of roof blah 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 approved 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 so you can flip through and pick something that's been approved already versus you know an architect putting something together and then playing the game to see if it can it can go up same thing with the roof, you know, the roof technology. What about solar panels? Tesla's got. Well, funny you say that. Yeah. I got a story about that. So yeah. 
my HOA in Glenview did not allow, only allowed cedar roofs. One day we look out the window and our next door neighbor is putting up solar panels and everybody's like, what the, you can't really put up cedar roofs. And um, so people started calling the HOA and stuff and they're like, uh, there was a state law signed, I believe it was by Governor Pat Quinn that says HOAs cannot prohibit solar panel roofs because of you know environment yeah. and energy and all that. I don't know, I'm gonna plead ignorance here. I don't know if that same law applies to city ordinances. So um, you know, HOAs, if if anybody living in an HOA wanted to put solar panels, they can't be stopped by the HOA according to this law. Um, but uh they uh they can't I, I don't I don't know what if it if that law applies to municipal ordinances. I had a here. cedar roof and I had solar panels. I had 3.2 kilowatts up there. Oh, and you had a huge bill. Uh, <laughs> well, well, no, the feds paid. Uh, yeah, that's true. But at least a third of it. Does that, it pay for it? Because we looked at it. it uh, we did the because our old house was almost due for a roof before we moved. Um, and I found a website that you could calculate how much it costs and how much it brings back. And I would have, it wouldn't pay for itself for like 25 years. Um, well, I did the calculation. So I'm like, screw that. And then I moved. So it didn't matter. The new owners, it's their problem. now. <laughs> well, again, you know, Moore's law, the processing power of a computer chip, you know, doubles every 18 months. Same thing happens with batteries now, because look, if you're going to do it for, to be, you know, cost effective, it's, it's you, you do it to be off the grid. And if you can store the power in a battery, the batteries are getting cheaper. So again, Tesla, they have their own version of roof tiles that can capture the energy. So I'd be interested to see if the feds, because you don't want to go, you don't want to have the fed lawyers going up against you. That could be pretty expensive for, for the city. But if these people really want to press things, you know, go the solar route because, uh, what you know? You don't want to be environmentally friendly. Oh well, yeah, that, that that's going to really conflict with most of those uh, the blockers. blockers who are uh, tend to skew on the uh, liberal side. I uh, it's just oh, like how they. Uh, you remember uh, everybody wanted the windmills till they were going to put them up in uh, uh, Martha's Vineyard and like, oh no, not here. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, I don't know. I, had, I mean, I this is tough. Up. And I and I don't envy the council or even, you know, I mean, uh, Alderman Preslack noted that he used to chair the HBC, so I, I don't want to paint a broad brush of the HBC here. Um, and they are volunteers, so they do rely on staff. And and, and the staff has got a lot on their plate, too. So I, I don't, I, I was a little off at the two former HBC members going out of their way to come up and, like, odds of history telling us, thou shalt not violate the 17 commandments of historic presentation. they they have worse social personal skills than i do if you ever watch one of those yeah. meetings in in market square i've said this before market square is a historic thing here in this city and rightfully so but if you it, it i don't think the 17 feet allow that to be built today <laughs> it's just mr. i mean it's t crazy it up. mr t screwed it up pity the fool oh. All for getting rid of thorn bush or whatever that thing that tree is called. I served ice cream to Mr. T. Did you really? When, when I worked here in, in at, ha at the Hagen Dazs in Lake Forest in their high school. Yeah. Did you did you pity the fool? So I, I, he he gave me a five dollar tip. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you spend it on? So we had that <laughs> we, so we had that going on. We had the people coming up, and what I didn't get was you can wrap up, you can make that library look like a, a saran wrap uh, jello mold for periods of time. Well, I mean, construction is, I mean, construction is construction, Pete. I mean, nothing, nothing ever looks good during construction, right? I mean, so the appeal, the, the Kennedy Expressway has been under construction since it was built. I mean, you know, I, uh, Look, I'm, yeah, I'm and I think I don't know. Yeah, this family may have to put a tarp up because it's, winter's coming, and I don't know if you can. You know, well, I guess these roofers, these roofer guys, show up and they can get this stuff done in a day or two. My neighbors just had their roof done a couple months ago, and it took them about two or three days. The HPC was still they're still ruminating on this, and I didn't understand why the appeal is like happening now versus earlier in the year. I, Look, I, I'm trying to be pragmatic to see both sides of this. I feel for for the family. Uh, 
I don't feel as much for the HPC. I think that needs to be tweaked a little bit, but you know, there's two years to research. I, sorry. The deer path update looks like that's coming along. That looks really neat from the, the pictures you showed. Uh, a few years ago, I was in Dallas and got a tour of the Cowboys stadium and the turf they use. And you wouldn't know it was turf unless they told you. I mean, it's, the technology's gotten that good. And I understand that's a that's a for-profit NFL team that makes billions. That Dallas Cowboys arguably make the most of any NFL franchise. Did but, they let you go um, on that field? Yeah, they did. They did. Uh, walked on it. And they actually, you know, they have different turfs or they have a turf for the Cowboys games. And then when they do like the Cotton Bowl, um, they have a diff- completely different turf for the Cotton Bowl. So they roll the NFL turf off. They showed us the room where they store the turfs. And they roll the Cotton Bowl turf on. And I guess the other college football games, because the hash marks are different and all this stuff. So in the old days, they just painted it differently and, you know, dealt with it. But now they just roll out new turf for it. So the technology's there. And um, it probably in the long, yeah, is there a lot of cash up front to do this? Absolutely. But in the long run, one, you probably save money on maintenance, and two, you avoid all these rainouts. Because I mean, what yeah, kid it's the wants rainouts. to? That's that's a, that's the only thing that I'm I'm sticking up for turf. But next time you go visit that turf, take a twenty yard uh, head start and then dive on it, and then do it. <laughs> see, see if you know. Well, Walter different. Payton, I, I like I said, I've, I'm told the technology's come along. I never played football. I know you did. You don't have to. Um, just, just go out there, run twenty yards. Well, Walter, you on. know, if you remember Soldier Field had artificial turf in the 80s um and so the 80 years if you go back and look at all the footage from their home games it was, it's artificial turf and that was really bad artificial turf back then that was I'll, like um no. go it was to like going out yeah. cement go walter to payton it. said walter payton said his career could have gone longer if he played on grass yeah so so could wendell davis he didn't play in philadelphia blew up both of his knees on uh, on yeah. the earth in one play so but these but, are an nfl players but any anywho, uh, getting back to the city council meeting, uh, that update they're 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 taking away the tennis courts and putting in pickleball, which is genius. Well, it, it is until pickleball is no longer the rage in twenty years. But um, well, let's just say if it doesn't work <laughs> out, all you got to do is restripe it, and you're doing tennis again. So uh, you see. I've never seen tennis. Maybe in the seventies, Arthur Ashe and Billie Jean King. Maybe you know that that's when it was a rage. I don't see a lot of. Well, you had the whole show with what was his name, Ray, uh, the pickleball Ray. dude, Ray J. Ray J. Ray J. Ray J. So, I mean, uh, that was a good show, and right I, here. I, he had a lot of uh, he had a lot of uh, insight on on pickleball, and I guess it's just it is it less and it's more intense than tennis. Why would someone choose? Why does somebody say, "Hey, I want to play pickleball instead of playing tennis"? Less running. The women like it. They like it so much that they are violent when they play it. I got some in-laws that have some rage issues that I've personally witnessed playing pickleball. But that's a wow. That's another story. <laughs> Is that why like Buff chained up the pickleball uh, courts? <laughs> I don't know. They they couldn't figure it out. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Another news item. Uh, now I feel kind of bad, and I don't feel bad, which will probably get me some emails. But uh, you had that motorcycle guy get wiped out. You see those guys all the time going in between the lanes, and I'm like, oh, I just want to open up my door. And it, it, no, don't do that. But well, um, or you're gonna be, or you're gonna be in big trouble. Uh, no, if you open up the door, this week's episode circle. of the podcast from from Menard Correction Center. Here's um but no the uh i i don't know though i didn't i saw it happen didn't read the details other than i did read that he was swerving between uh, got these d-bag motorcycles that's that's just a recipe for disaster yeah they're passing between lanes and it's like oh my god rest in peace i feel so bad i don't feel you have a helmet on does you're going that fast and you hit it i guess it doesn't matter huh it really doesn't matter so I mean, I'm sorry for the family, and I don't want to, you know, Yeah, it's a tragedy. And look, people make dumb mistakes that cost them their lives or wreck their lives. And If you're, you if know, you're driving between a semi and my car and you wipe out and you rip RIP yourself, I'm not feeling that bad. 
I'm not feeling about that bad electric bikes coming by blows through a stop sign and my car takes them out. I'm not feeling that bad about that either. Just saying. Going on down the list here. Uh, I guess there's a little piece that Dorfman did on mental health and uh, the high school. I didn't see it. You did not see that? No. Oh, okay. Well, I, I've know, been under the weather here. I understand. I'm sorry. Uh <laughs> But if you if you go to Patch or Lake Forest Lake Bluff News page on Facebook, you'd be able to read my well thought out article on mental health. And I asked Matt Montgomery specifically about this in the interview that he did that we helped him get his hundred and six million. I said, "Thanks hey, a man. lot." <laughs> I said, "Hey, on the mental health side of things, I mean, are you staffed up? Everything's you know good to go." He goes, "Yeah, man, we're fine. We're fine." And then they come up with an article and they sent it somebody in to check out what they're doing and they're not as fine as he said. I maybe I'm nitpicking here, but you know that dude has told me so many things and then comes out later that it's the opposite. People say I have it out for him. I have it out for anybody that I help out and they turn their back and they stick it right in my back. I just got a got an issue with it joe so yeah i, no, I mean he should come on or the at least the, the elected school board no um, they got to get some more school board people on there on the political side of things uh speaker of the house uh vacant yeah you want the job i mean who uh, wants it at this point deal with those nuts i if i, I mean a- matt gas what the hell is he thinking well i know what he's thinking he's trying to promote himself but I mean, as a Republican, I just hang my head and like, what? The? Eight so, Republicans basically um, caused this label, chaos. Any, if you're in the business of of, of politics, it, it just doesn't work. You got too many uh, people you got to take care of that you can't get the job done. Yeah, I mean, he, he got that speaker. McCarthy got the speakership by, you know, a... He wasn't reaching across the aisle. He was, he yeah. was appeasing. I mean, them. here's here's the thing, though. Every Democrat, all the Democrats say the Republican Party has gotten too extreme. But what did they do when it was time for a vote, including Congressman Brad Schneider? They voted with Matt Gatz. They caucus with Matt Gatz. So it's just like when J.B. Pritzker spent all that money in the Republican primary to tell the voters how conservative Darren Bailey was so that he would win the Republican primary and then Pritzker could take a vacation for the rest of the election. Um, the same thing's happening here. They're, the Democrats are gaslighting the um, the right wing of the Republican Party so that that is the face of the Republican Party so that they can't get elected. And I, I say, look, if that's going to happen, we should do the same thing to the Democrats. We make Bernie Sanders, AOC, those people, the far left of their party, uh, the face of the Democratic Party instead of moderates um, that are that are still around. So, I mean, you know, this whole get ga- this whole gaslighting and silos thing is just not good for the country. We really need to to work together. And I, I totally get the frustration that people have with Congress. Does the federal government spend too much money? Absolutely, spends way too much money. Should they have done some of the stuff that Gats is suggesting, like uh, single it ha- instead of putting everything in one bill? make it every spending item is a single bill that stands on its own. So you can't, you aren't forced to vote for something awful because it's lumped in with something good. Yes, I agree with that. But as long as you have a divided government, which means a, you have a Republican house and a Democrat Senate and you have a Democrat president, you, you can't, you can't just sit in the corner and say, no, 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 I won't do this. You have to work and balance stuff. The people, the American people want uh, people to get things done. They want parties when they're in there to compromise. They don't always like the compromise that they get at the end, but government shutdowns never work for the GOP. Anytime the federal government has shut down in the past, even though we may have been right on the issue, uh, we get clobbered in the poll. So the only argument I ever want to win is the is on election day. All right. I just want to win elections because if you don't win elections, you can't govern, you don't get a say at the table. So I don't want to get score points on Fox News or OAN or any of those shows. Um, I want us winning elections. 
Well, uh, but clearly, Brad Schneider, who has portrayed himself as a moderate, as a guy who can reach across the aisle, was anything but when he cast the vote with Matt Gatz. I, I, I don't, I, I don't get it. I, I do. Why does why don't all the Republicans do what Severino did and just turn Democrat? What would happen then? Well, I right. So you got in one his party. case. I, I in his case, I don't think it was sincere. I think he's just trying to. I think he's a gimmick in himself. He would be if he ever got to Congress, he would be like Matt Gaetz. All right, he'd be he'd be a clown. He wouldn't do any get anything done. He would just be uh, he'd be he'd be angling for every TV camera he could get himself on. Um. But seriously, what he, would happen if every Republican turned into a Democrat? They'd be called Dinos. You know, like we call them Severino. Now we're going to call they're going to call him Severdino. Because oh. <laughs> he's going to be a Democrat in name only. I mean, how he goes on shows like ours and says how pro-life he is. And then he's suddenly in a party where no one's pro. I, I'm talking about big picture. If all oh, that is a big picture. Well, well, <laughs> what if there were no more Republicans and then you just had one party and you had to vote? That's what we have in Illinois, basically, at this point. Right. I mean, that's, unfortunately, that's my point. I know a lot of Republicans that vote in the Democratic primary. And again, and that's my point. That. Yeah. What would happen then? I know it's the possibility. What would happen built. is, well, I'll tell you what would happen is you get this the awful economic situation we have in Illinois. One party rule has been a disaster. For Illinois, absolute disaster. Um, we're we continue to have the highest outbound migration rate of any state. Um, as a percent, the taxes here in Lake Forest are good, thanks to the city's uh, good financial watch. But uh, in Illinois, statewide, we pay the highest percentage of family income in state and local taxes in, than any other state in the country. So, in other words, if you take all the taxes, income taxes, property taxes, sales taxes, gas taxes. And you add that up and then do that as a percentage of your household income. It's the highest percentage in Illinois versus any other state in the country. So we're the highest tax, highest tax state in the country, highest outbound migration rate in the country. Businesses continue to leave this state. So the question is, why? Why are we why are we continuing down the road of insanity? Because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. The question still stands. We're talking about insanity here. What if there was only one party? You had all the people go to Democrat. So when somebody's voting, they don't know who they're voting for. All they see is Democrat. Yeah. Then you don't do you I, I get what you're saying, and I can see some merits to that. However, um I think if you look at other countries where uh, they have multi parties and all that stuff, it I think they even have more chaos. I think there is something about a brand name and establishing some semblance of a brand name. Now, you know, I'm like I said, I, I'm concerned about the brand name the last few years and that we've gone too far hard right to appeal to a lot of people. Um, but any state I, that has a high urban count. There shouldn't be any Republicans. They should all be Democrats. Well, the mayor of Dallas just switched from being a Democrat to being a Republican. So he, the largest city in the country now with a Republican mayor is Dallas, Texas. Now, some but say he did Texas. that because he, yeah, well, he Dallas itself is a Democratic city, but I think this guy is looking to run for statewide office in Texas, and he didn't see a future um, in the in the Democratic Party there. So I, I just uh, don't see why we waste all our money in these. These urban cities, these states, you should be able to. It, it should be the the person, and if it's not, you're not picking a, a party. It's just the person. I, I don't see why more people don't don't do that. I don't know. It'd be a lot of work for people. They'd have to do a lot of research, Pete. You're asking a lot of voters. Well, I hate to say it. <laughs> that's. Um, I mean, let, let's take let's take the mayoral election here. So we had on the ballot caucus for the guys lake forest caucus and then Drew Beidler was independent though she was anything but 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 yeah. people went with the brand because they identified it with it and like what they had now skokie uh the skokie has a, had a caucus party for that was in charge for 60 years but uh, people started to get discontented with that and they actually got a referendum passed in skokie that takes party labels off the ballot for municipal elections so now everybody just runs on their own Kind of like school board elections, but so school board elections are nonpartisan. There's it's just the names on the ballot, Pete. No, there's no party name next to that. Uh, 
and look at all the complaints you've got about uh, school districts. So I don't know if it, I don't know if that is really the answer to the problems. I, it, and, and in fact, it may cause more chaos because I'm going to go vote in a school board election. I don't know who the fiscally conservative candidates are unless I've done my homework ahead of time because they're just a bunch of names on a sheet of Illinois. Will will there ever be a Republican governor? Chicago, will there ever be a Republican mayor? What are the odds? I doubt Chicago. I could see a scenario with Illinois, but it's going to be a long time. Percentage. I mean, we just had one 10 years ago, less than 10 years ago, Bruce Rauner. Yeah. So I think the Democrats, I, I think if they keep screwing up and once J.B. Pritzker's checkbook goes away, is it, at some point in the future, it's going to go away. Um, then you might see something, which is basically what happened with with Rauner getting in. People were so fed up with how this state was run. They said, look, let me give this guy a shot. Now he screwed up, and that's a whole show in itself, but um, outspent. I mean, the, basically the Republicans got a billionaire, and, and so Mike Madigan says, well, I'll get a bigger billionaire. So uh, he made Rauner look like a poor guy, Pritzker. Um, Let's talk about a so, Republican yeah. we, do, we do like, Mary Cole. Do you see that video? Yeah, that I love her. Yeah, she's great. She's awesome. No, she put something out just a little bit ago as we're recording. There was a shoot <laughs> by a middle school up in Waukegan. Uh, no bueno. No bueno. No, I think there's a lot of crap happening here with... Um, with uh, this safety act, the the McHenry County State's Attorney and the DuPage County State's Attorney have already come out and brought us examples of how people that they would have kept in jail are now being released on the street uh, because of the safety act. And I'm sure that same stuff is happening here in Lake County, but our state's attorney, Mr. Reinhardt, won't won't let you know. About it. Um, so uh, there was just, I mean, it's insanity. These guys and and. Uh, Kim Fox, I know that we're not in Cook County, but uh, Reinhardt is a Fo- Kim Fox protege. Kim Fox just did a plea bargain deal with one of the guys who killed uh, the police officer, Ella French. Um, yeah. Seven years. Seven years for killing a police officer. Now, I get that he didn't. He wasn't the trigger man, but he was involved in killing a cop. And as far as I'm concerned, if you're, if you're in any way involved in killing a, a police officer, you're in jail for life. And if... And, Really, I, and if you killed the if you the trigger man, in my opinion, you should get the death penalty. But this is Illinois; we 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 don't have it. Getting back to one one party system. So, Mary Cole, keep the fight out there. Yeah, go, Mary, go. We'll we'll, we'll get a an, an update from her. Joe, we got uh, Halloween coming up. Have you ever had a Halloween stuff. yet? Yeah, we had Halloween last year. We were kind of surprised we didn't have that many trick or treaters. Uh, in the neighborhood, so we actually ended up return. We we ended up returning some of the bags of candy that we didn't open up. <laughs> well, you are a West Sider, yeah. But there's a lot of kids in this neighborhood. I mean, I was kind of surprised um, uh, that that it was that low, and the weather was pretty decent. But we'll see this year. I mean, uh, my kids are you know Halloween is uh, they're too cool for for their Halloween now. So top three, top like, three Halloween party. kids. Top three Halloween candy. Oh well, I'm diabetic, so none. But but when I, before I was diabetic, yeah, and uh, I always you, you got to go with the Hershey's. I mean, you got to go with the, Her- Hershey uh, the Hershey's, Hershey's, the 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 plain Hershey uh, chocolate bar. I mean, it's it's the it's the gold standard. No pun intended. Uh, Twix. I always like Twix. Um, another one. Three Musketeers was always good. Um. No wonder. I always hated, I hated those little like caramel corn things. When you when somebody gave I didn't me that, say like the three worst. I said the three <laughs> best. Okay, the three all right. Well, okay. okay, I gave you my three best. All right, number one, Snickers. Number two, Reese's peanut butter cups. Ooh, those are number good. three, peanut M and M's. Yeah, I'm, now you're giving me a diabetic coma just there from you, hearing there, that. There you go. Take your shot. <laughs> You know, I brought up West Side and East Side to make fun, but that is a real thing in Lake Forest. You got the Velfers, very East Lake Foresters. The what? Can you get any far west than you? Um, well, I guess uh, you know out where the uh, folks by Lake Forest Academy, 
as far west as you can get. Joanne Desmond hey, uh, and those shout folks. Out to- they were providers only, Victoria. One of I think one of two precincts that provider won in the mayoral election because of the train issue, because the, they're upset about the trains that have been there since 1865. And they still didn't get that right. But shout out to Lake Forest Academy, number one. Yeah. School. You want to ship your kid, kid off. Set them All those years we threatened our kids with go, we said we're gonna send you to boarding school if you don't uh, get your act together. Maybe we would have sent them there, but you know. You know, all right, shout out, and then you know, I'm I'm gonna give praise, and then on the other side, I'm gonna say, why would you send your kid to boarding school? You know, I I have often asked that question, and in fact, when watching the count my wife was home, we were watching the council meeting. Um the other night and Mayor Tack was uh, in his comments was praising them. I, I, I actually made that comment. I said, who goes to Lake Forest again? But the, the school has a very rich history. Well, back I mean, in the day, there was a big, there was a big history of, of kids going to board. I mean, like George Bush went to boarding school and all this stuff. I think it was a prestigious thing back in the day. But why? You don't um, want to be with your kid? Like what? Well, I think back in the day, the public, the schools in a lot of areas weren't, nice um as they, they didn't um spend all this money like they do now but uh i don't know no, I, it's you, a good question maybe we should get somebody from i, I got an answer let's yeah. get someone from lake forest academy on the show and let's let's give them an infomercial to, to talk about their uh about their wonderful program joe why don't you go do it might be overseas kids that's a good point it might that's be right. overseas kids. it's a lot of overseas but still i mean i know people that got sent away to boarding school and I thought I, something, something just, but I, uh, but yeah. if you're that busy, that rich, that you don't have time for your kid, do you send them off somewhere? I, I it's what I, I could be I entirely know. wrong. I, yeah, I, I, I'm not a subject matter expert on this, but uh, there is a, if you look again, if we're talking about his history of Lake Forest here, uh, the Lake Forest Academy is a very, very big part of the history of the city. Correct. And then you had the, uh, what was the college that turned into uh, the girls' school here? Uh, Borat. 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 There, I, I was corrected by someone. It It's spelled B-A-R-A-T, or was spelled B-A-R-A-T. The T is silent. Yeah. Barra. Okay. I love Borat. That dude's funny. He, he ruined Rudy, what was left of Rudy Giuliani's career, but that's another. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So shout out to Lake Forest uh, Academy. And then somebody explain, explain to me why you send your kid off away. I just. It's almost like giving your kid up for adoption for a part of the time. Isn't it? All yeah, right. I, you don't want to. I, I'd love to. I because I, I I don't I don't I don't know I, I I'd love to hear I'm just, I'm trying why put yourself in there like why I think like I said maybe it's a prestige thing I don't know so maybe so, they live in maybe they live in Chicago where the where Chicago public schools are so awful no that they send them to boarding I don't know no what you're saying is prestige is at a higher value than connecting or being with your kid that's what you're saying. That's I mean, the Bush saying. family. The Bush family turned out pretty good, uh, <laughs> in my opinion. I I had look. I voted for him. I also had lunch with the dude and the stuff. W or H W? Uh, yes, both. W. Oh, both. Uh, and look, you can tell they're from Texas, and we'll we'll just leave it at that. Well, they're originally they're originally they're from Connecticut. They were up. They were uh, the grandfather they're, was a big New York uh, financier. Yale. They're, well, they're Yale. Yeah. They were all up there, but they made their money in in, in and Texas. They moved out to Texas with the oil boom. Yeah. Okay. Uh, George W. Bush won Lake Forest. I might add in the in of course where he ran did. for president. Chicago Bears. Oh. Hey, I got an idea. Yeah. Can Prue Bidler buy the Bears? <laughs> Check her sofa. <laughs> How about that? I mean, her and Frank. How about her and Frank buy the Bears, turn it around, and keep them here in Lake Forest, their practice facility in Lake Forest. Maybe build the stadium in Lake Forest somewhere. And <laughs> put a landfill out in the lake. No. 
But no, but seriously, I mean, the Bears need a new owner. Prue's got all this money to spend. And instead of giving it to Eric Reinhardt, could she buy the Bears? But getting uh, back to the Bears, it all started with the the mascot with no helmet. It just um, well, whatever, <laughs> Justin. We were. On I think some of these are playing without helmets in practice, and that might be explained. But but Joe, I mean we that were, game Sunday. Oh my gosh! Here we thought they had it. We're like, oh, Justin Fields has finally found his own. He's doing his thing. He's running all over the place. This is great. And then boom. And he throws the interception, and it's just like, oh. Pride of Naperville, Sean Payton, he, sh- he shut that down. But it it just – we were on this early. <laughs> J- Justin Fields is the bust. They're probably going to trade him to Atlanta, and they're going to have the first and second pick, and they're going to get – they're, they're going to destroy another quarterback. And and on and on we, we, we go. Why do people give them money? It's like the Tribune and the Cubs. Well, I I mean, we all watch the game on TV. I mean, it's just part of our culture here in Chicago to watch the Bears game every week. You watched it. I watched it. I I didn't. You didn't watch it? Okay, fair enough. I watched it. I I I just, I, I, there's something in me that I probably, in, in 40 years, I've probably missed less than 10 Bears games on TV. So I just it's just something I just do. I, I I don't always watch the entire game, especially when it's a noon game and I go to church at eleven. We're still getting back and stuff, so I'll end up watching like you know the second quarter on or whatever. But um, but I I just it's part and you look not alone because you look at the TV ratings. Even when they the Bears still have pretty strong TV ratings. Um, I I think there was one year that they were out. When the Blackhawks were winning and the Bears were losing, the Bears games were still drawing a higher audience than the Blackhawks games. Then you got Khalil Mack, who was too expensive, and then he just explodes last week with six yeah. sacks, and the people are look- well, people have written him off as too old, but he obviously wasn't. You look at the numbers. We'll see what they do. Eber, Eber Plus, he he's not going to last the season, is he? Boy, there's going to be a real estate agent in Lake Forest or Lake Bluff that's going to be busy soon. <laughs> a lot of them. A lot. Well, of- I guess there's a lot of. I've, I've talked to a couple of real estate agents. Um, we could probably talk to our friend Michelle Parnell here, a supporter MP. of our show. Uh, but I guess even let, let's take the most successful coaches in the history of the Bears. Like, yeah, Bitka. He was only here ten years. So these houses do turn over that are owned by coaches and assistant coaches and all that stuff most of the players don't live in lake forest the young guys they they like to live in the, the you know there's a lot of waukegan in there a lot of them are waukegan they got a good deal are they it. yeah uh but lake forest them. like i mean Nagy lived in lake bluff i believe eberflus lives in lake bluff um i uh Alan Williams was living in Lake Forest. Uh, I don't know what his status is now, but uh, you know, right. so there's 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 a history of like and Bobby Douglas. He never left. <laughs> he, he he's been in Lake Forest uh, ever since he left the team. I think so. We gotta get let's get Bob. Get, I know you had him on your Chicago History podcast, but let's get him on. Lake yeah, Forest we're 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 working with Bobby. We're doing a little right. something something. Well, maybe we have to interview him live at the Lantern or something. I don't know. Uh, you know he's. He's he, everybody gave him a reputation as a partier. Not so much. Not so much. You you know he, he's serious. He's all, all business. All business. We'll give an update on Bobby soon. Yeah. So the Bears. The good right. luck. Good luck. Oh, I, at this point, you're playing for the draft pick, right? Yeah, the first and the second pick. Never done yeah. before. And hopefully, I'm just I'm rooting for the Detroit Lions in the division because my two favorite teams are the Bears and whoever plays Green Bay. So. I was very happy to see the Lions beat Green Bay the other night. Uh, um, very popular Instagram meme. Yeah. And then uh, October 28th in Schaumburg at Empty Barrels, Heart of Glass, Blonde Ooh. Tribute. Bands How many people good. are going to make the drive from Lake Forest to Schaumburg? I tried to get it in Highwood, but... Uh, I thought you were going to be in Highwood. Uh, we out? got... Schaumburg won the vote. We did a little... Okay. Something, something. I, I... I I live in Lake Forest. Everybody else doesn't live in Lake Forest, and I okay. obviously want to be in Highwood, but uh, 
everybody's closer to Schomburg, so more. Highwood's, uh, Highwood's a, a hop in town these days. Got a lot very of Very vibrant, happening. Joe. Very vibrant. Vibrant, yes. Well, 28 Mile and our guy over at uh, Toadstool. Toad, come on. Oh, man. yeah. You, you, gotta, you guys got to speak up a little bit more if you want this guy. <laughs> when are you going to play Gorton Center? They have those concerts in the parking lot in the summer. Come on. Seriously, though, I think we'll do like a Market Square type thing or. Love it. Or, you know, one of those. But we'll uh, get the podcast to be a sponsor or get pod, we'll give out the beads like we did for like four. It'd be awesome. That's a lot of beads. That was a lot of forever plastics we threw, threw out there. I think I, I've talked to a couple of people that still have theirs up in their house. Yeah, those were a hit. Those were a hit. Yeah. So that's the stuff that's going on. You know, it's always kind of a busy week, you know, with city council meetings, uh, you know, stuff that pops up. Any of the people that uh, felt like they didn't get their say at the uh, city council meeting, you can have your say here on the Lake Forest podcast. Come on up. We'll we'll include you. What We won't put you at five minutes or three minutes or, what, what you know, whatever it is. <laughs> Unless you ramble. Well, we can always edit rambling. Right, Joe. We had to. We had to put. A, Why don't they have a, a kill switch on that mic? That's a simple elect- electronic. I, mic. I think Randy Mayor Tack does a pretty good job of enforcing the rules. So. Oh, he does. I'm not saying he's not, but just he's like a surgeon. Sure. No, you just <laughs> you know, once you have surgery doing this is like yeah okay no big deal. Yeah, but the people ramble because there's no repercussions. It should be like here's the timer. You got the AV guy. Click. But 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 nothing. Well, they let them wrap up when the timer goes off, is my understanding. Oh, why? You want to be like the, remember when they turned off Trump's mic in the debate? <laughs> well, if it's a time limit, it's a time limit. If, if Yeah. If you don't Fair enforce enough. it, then, you know, I'm just putting it out there. Putting it yeah, out no, there. It's, it's a good point. Okay. All right, Joe, anything else to wrap up? No, I think it's, uh, let's get some uh, new rules for Cedar. Uh, Cedar roofing here in town, both the city level and at the, at the various HOA levels, because uh, uh, I'd, I'd hate to see houses burned down like my old neighbor's house in Glenview did. Hey, that family, whoever that was, put solar panels up there. You're building a whole new house, Pete. Whole new house. Put solar panels up there. So how's that for your historic district, that you have to build a new house instead? You really want that instead of saving? All because of a silly roof rule? Come on. We'd like to bring to you these uh, 20, whoops, these 17. Oh, I see some AI graphics coming from Pete. (laughs) Joe, we bid you a fond adieu. Have a great week. Go Scouts. Go Scouts. The Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Looking for the best pool supplies? Look no further than Doheny's Pool Supplies. With a history dating back to 1967, this family-owned business offers everything families need to keep their pools clean and sparkling from chemicals to equipment. Plus, customers enjoy free shipping on all orders. Visit Doheny's Pool Supplies today at doheny.com, D-O-H-E-N-Y.com to learn more. Forest Bluff Real Estate Team serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Josephitis, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and of course, Michelle Parnell. Get a free market analysis now at forestbluffrealestate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Gangier. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, Exceptional Process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Havy Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest own Mike Havy. Check them out at havycommunications.com. We'd also like to say we're thankful for our Patreon supporters, Otto, John C., Helen, and Herrick. 